Hello everyone, my name is Ralph Hall. I'm an Associate Professor in the School of Public and International Affairs at Virginia Tech. And it's my privilege today to introduce Dr. Virgil Wood, who I have had the pleasure of getting to know over the past several years. Dr. Wood is a church leader, educator, civil rights activist, who has committed much of his life's work to the struggle for economic and spiritual development um, among the nations disadvantaged. He is an ordained Baptist minister and has served churches in Rhode Island, Massachusetts and Virginia for over 50 years. For over a decade, Dr. Wood served with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and was a member of his national executive board of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and coordinated the state of Virginia in the historic March on Washington back on April 28, 1963. So with that, I will pass over to Dr. Virgil Wood, who um, may say a few remarks about the images that are currently displayed on the screen. Uh, yes, thank you so much. I'm so blessed to be here uh, and to be a part of this. Uh, in the left-hand top is uh, Ma uh, Ralph and I, uh, with Martin in 1965, and Ralph has just posed a question to Martin. Uh, to the right is uh, welcoming, welcoming Martin to Boston, and the, 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 the scene there with myself and Rosa Parks is that Miss Parks was receiving an honorary doctorate that day, and, uh, and to the right is my wife of, uh, of 70 years and Mrs. Parks, and we have had the privilege of continuing Mrs. Park, the work we did with her actually before we joined with her in it, our work in Boston, where we were involved in saving every child in the ghetto. And I'm gonna tell you something, our work with, 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 with teenagers and their families, welfare mothers, uh, uh, street corner homeless people, all of that, God used us and we, tra we he used that work to transform the lives. And that's why my wife and Mrs. Mrs. Parks literally grinning at each other. And the work we do out of that is called Saving Every Child on Planet Earth. See Cope, and you'll hear more about that later. Excellent. So we have been communicating and working uh, as, a, as a collaborative team since 2017 when we created the Virginia Tech, Virginia Union University Beloved Community Initiative. And we ran an essay contest back in 2018 um, for high school juniors and seniors. And you can watch a video about that if you like um, outside of this presentation. And what we're going to do today is talk to you about a, a new version of the essay contest. And I'm going to pass back to Dr. Wood who will say a few remarks about the genesis of this um, contest. As you uh, uh, look at these uh, different presentations, you will understand why South Africa got it wrong after the American Civil Rights Movement got it wrong. It's not enough to change players. Uh, when you just change players, uh, you, you don't get a new play. Uh, you got to change the playbook. Uh, what South Africa did, it simply changed the color of the faces uh, uh, of the players. And, and I think Nelson Mandela was keen to avoid bloodshed and therefore he did not create the change of the playbook. And I'm not criti critiquing or criticizing him. I'm simply saying that the lesson we have never learned, Judaism never learned that lesson of, of, of why Jesus was the genius of Judaism. And, and even now uh, Judaism doesn't understand the genius of, uh, the genius of Judaism still is Jesus, but they didn't embrace it. But what all I'm saying is, Jesus changed the playbook. Every, every other human institution just changes the, 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 the faces. That's not enough. You got to change the playbook. And then it doesn't matter what color the players are. They will play according to the playbook. And the name of the playbook in all of the religions and cultures of the world is Jubilee Love, Beloved Community, Beloved Economy, Systematized. You will see why Daddy King is really the name that people need to understand when they talk about Martin Luther King. The, the Martin Luther King legacy started in 1899, although Martin was born in 1929. And the Martin Luther King legacy uh, went on until 1984, although Martin was taken from us in 1968, 16 years later. 
And then his mother was assassinated in 1974. All of that's in the story. You need to know the story of why Daddy King at 14, at 12 years old, almost got lynched and said, I will never stop hating white people. And his mother said, a modern's grandmother, a, a Daddy King's mama, Miss Diddy said, you must never do that. You must never hate people. And, and there he was after the death of his son, going to see George Wallace and saying to George, you are my brother, whether whether I'm your brother is irrelevant. You are my brother. I've come to tell you, I care about you. And, and um, George Wallace, and prayed for him. And George Wallace went to the Dexter Church and asked to be forgiven. And, and that was the most elegant uh, a plea I've ever heard. And they responded by singing, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. Daddy King and George Wallace in heaven now playing chess. Now you see the picture of uh, Rosa Parks in the middle, uh, Mrs. Uh, Buffett, Warren Buffett's uh, first wife, and Miss Osceola McCarty, Susan Johnson Buffett. And uh, Warren Buffett met Martin Luther King in 1967. I believe it was at Grinnell University. I'm anxious to find out from Mr. Buffett what connection there might be to, to the time they met Martin Luther King in 1967, and the fact that he has challenged the wealth holders of the world to join his pledge and give away all of their money, uh, uh, put their money to use investing in the healing of the soul of nations and especially America. Here you see. Uh, on the right, many people will know that this is Sam Walton. In the middle, uh, Senator Russell Long of, of uh, uh, New Orleans. And to the left, my dear friend, Louis Kelso, the economist who gave us the economic system that combines the best of capitalism and the best of socialism. We call it neither capitalism nor socialism. We call it the beloved economy. And it is where capitalism and socialism have a streak of compassion. And when President George W. Bush talked about compassionate capitalism, the cynics in the nation made fun of poo poo the idea. He was right. If we find the compassion that's in capitalism and find the compassion that is within socialism, marry the compassion of both and let the other stuff go. And then you've got the beloved community economic systems. And that's what we're working on. There is in Galveston County here in Texas, uh, in the city of Galveston, where the Juneteenth movement got underway. And in Hitchcock, Texas, where, uh, where a young man, one of our colleagues, uh, uh, Mr. Collins, Samuel Collins, Reverend Samuel Collins and his wife purchased uh, an estate that had belonged to a former Confederate general who, who settled there. Uh, uh, his name was uh, Henry Martin. And, 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 the, and it's the Stringfellow Orchards that Mr. and Mrs. Collins purchased. And it will become a companion to the Deep Woods Memorial Cathedral, uh, one in Virginia and this one here in Texas. And the house you see is the uh, original house of the plantation. And to the right of that, you see the old barn there. And within that plantation, there will be uh, nine to 13 uh, worship trees of, that, will, that will carry the message of, of some of the ancestors. Uh, in our uh, uh, essay uh, uh, profile. For example, there'll be a one, one tree that will bring together Daddy King, George Wallace, and, uh, and John Lewis. And at that tree, there will be a message and there'll be flowers at the base of the tree. And there will be an app that people can go on. They go to the tree where they will feel the, the legacy and hear on their app, an explanation about this connection, and they will hear a song that encapsulates that message. And guess what? They will be able, 
uh, there is a new technology that's not even on the market yet by which somebody can be at that tree where one of the 32 people were taken from us in the massacre at Virginia Tech. Somebody's at a tree that represents one of those specific people. There are people hundreds of miles away will be able to be a part of an of a of a gathering, a presencing of the legacy of that person at that tree with the flowers at the base of the tree. They are back home wherever they are. Some might be in California, some may be in Illinois, some may be in, in Georgia, wherever they are, they will be present through this technology as though they were at the tree. They will be able to visit that tree through this technology. And we will be able to share with people uh, very shortly uh, about that. Uh, I, I think I want to mention also that a gentleman that many of you, you have heard about uh, who gave a speech at Morehouse. And at the end of the speech, he relieved the debt of 400 students so that they could go forward and create part of the beloved community unencumbered by the load of student debt. Mr. Robert F. Smith underwrote and paid off every bit of the student debt of that graduating class and then turned around and said, now, if your, if your mama or your dad has still got student debt, give me that too and we'll take care of it. This is, this is how this whole Memorial Deep Woods movement uh, is getting underway. Thank you, Dr. Wood. So um, we also have Woods here at Virginia Tech. And um, I will, I'm going to say a few words about these words. But before I do that, I do want to acknowledge, um, make, read this land acknowledgement that we acknowledge that the Totello and Manakan people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live and recognize their continuing connection to the land, water and air at Virginia Tech, the Virginia Tech consumes. We pay respect to the Totello and Manakan nations and to their elders past, present and emerging. And there's uh, an interesting connection here in, in terms of the history of Virginia Tech to the, the woods. Um, these woods are located um, next to Lane Stadium. Um, they're called the woods or stadium woods. It's about almost 14 acres of old growth forest. Um, the oldest white oak is about 295 years old, which puts it as a seedling around 1736, which I believe was when um, uh, George Mason was born, just to give you a historical connection. And there are 32 trees in the woods that are more than 200 years old. So it's a very special place here at Virginia Tech. And we'll come back to this um, in a moment. And this, this is just a quick zoom in so you can see that there's a north part and a, and a south part. We also at Virginia Tech have the Smithfield Plantation. And on this plantation, um, there were obviously slaves to the family, the Preston family that lived there. And what this shows is the, the, the slave cabin that has been relocated onto the site of the plantation. When I was in the, in the Smithfield Plantation uh, a year or two ago, I found um, this, this uh, information on the wall. And essentially what this talks about is the anxiety and separation of the, the slaves to the family, to the Preston family. Um, and the text on the right here, for example, talks about um, four of the brothers each taking one slave man or boy, separating him from his family um, and the Smithfield community uh, when they were essentially distributing the slaves among family members. And so there's a history here as well at Virginia Tech of, of, the, of this. And um, there's a connection between slaves and, and the deep woods that, Virgi that Virgil might, Dr. Wood might talk about again in a moment. Here's a picture of Dr. Wood on the top left at the plantation. Now, to give you a geographic context, um, this is the, the link or the distance between the historic Smithfield Plantation on the left and Stadium Woods on the right. Now, another um, memorial we have here at Virginia Tech is for those individuals who lost their lives, um, the 32 individuals who lost their lives uh, over a decade ago now. And, and 
you know, one of the things that we are thinking about is sort of the connectivity between these places, right? So you have the historic Smithfield plantation, you have the memorial on the drill field, and you have um, Stadium Woods, and the living learning community, um, leadership and social change living learning community is, is over here on the right. So we've covered a lot of different ideas. Uh, we've been, we've sort of done a big random walk, I think so far in this presentation, but we, we'll try to bring everything together here in our final remarks. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the essay contest here and then I'll pass to Dr. Wood um, to, to close us out. So we are running the essay contest again. And the, the challenge we're putting to students is to write an essay. And this time we've thought about three different ways to approach this. One is a possible self essay, to write an essay that considers how you might carry out the work of the set of ancestors you selected. And those ancestors are available on the, the belovedcommunity.com uh, website. You can think about a, a conversation with ancestors essay, or you can write an essay that captures a conversation between you and the set of ancestors you selected that relates to the notion of the beloved community. Um, and you can think about a, an essay where you're in conversation with your future self. So you write an essay in which the future version of yourself provides you advice based on the set of ancestors you uh, have selected. And, and Dr. Wood talked about a, a several of those pairings and groups um, in his remarks. And there's a whole wide array of individuals that you could look at. So we encourage you to go and look at the ancestors and select a pairing or group that aligns with what your, your interests are, your passions are. And so the, the long-term vision here is to take the work that all the students generate through these essay contests and begin to connect that in different ways with these, with the notion of the deep woods. And um, I'll, with that, I'll pass back to, to Dr. Wood um, for some closing remarks. I would uh, encourage people to uh, take advantage of how to free the dream. And in my book, uh, I, I had a, a co uh, a partner doing uh, the, the dream, free the dream, uh, a Martin Luther King's dream, but it was also Joseph's dream and, and that story of Joseph and his brothers who sold him into slavery. Uh, when they uh, come to uh, to him not knowing who he is because he's in charge of the granary in Egypt and there's famine in Goshen where the family lives. They've come to ask for grain and they're standing before Joseph and, and, and uh, trying to negotiate something. They don't know who he is, but he knows who they are. And uh, because of that, what you're looking at here is the eagle. And we think about the American prospect right now, but we've got to get beyond the predicament the predicament is that the American possibility is chained down, is held back. In one talent, you see the chain, it's been broken, but that's getting ahead of the story. In the other talent, you see five stalks of wheat. These are the colors that we traditionally think about humanity as being. The truth is, there's not five colors of humanity, there's one color, and that's called skin color. It's beloved skin color. It ain't, but, but in our Situation. We got to work that out so that we become one. And we're talking about the prospect of what we would call tambo, T-A-M-B-O, that all may be one. And, and that's what the legacy of Martin Luther King that started with his daddy and ended with his daddy. You need to know Daddy King's story as well as Martin Luther King's story. And to that end, Dr. Dr. Ralph Hall and I, as well as uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Daniel Fairbanks, and others will be offering some intensives starting this summer, and you'll hear more about that. But there's a song called Free the Dream, and you can go to uh, GoDaddy and download it for a very modest uh, 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 cost and, and, and download it so that you can hear the voices of, of some wonderful young people. They are black and brown and caramel in their singing and presentation. Free the Dream and let the eagle fly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Wood. So with that, we will bring this to a, a close and um, we hope 
that some of these ideas have, have stimulated excitement among the student body in the leadership and social change residential college and beyond. And we look forward to seeing the, the essays that students develop later this year. And uh, I'll be available to answer questions after this presentation um, on the evening when this is shown. So thank you so much for watching this and we look forward to further engagement in the future.